going crazy. Good morning guys. Today I wanted to talk to you about when you stop protecting your permaculture from your animals and you start to use your animals in your permaculture. So last year I let the ducks in this whole area. They took all the weeds down, they manured, and then the dirt started to be more compressed. The chickens were starting to dig things up a little bit more. It started to be compacted, it started to be dusty. And so we closed this off for three months. The weeds have grown back. It's nothing like grass. The ducks pretty much take care of all the grass. But it's um, annual weeds that self-seed, that feed bees. We have a lot of hoary cress in here. Some parts of like broadleaf weeds, they're just not a big deal because we mulch. Okay, these are some of my weeds. I don't remember what these are called, but they're kind of like a, I don't know what they are. They get really long, they get really tall, they get really tough, but because they have so much water and they're in the mulch, they're super, super easy to just pull out. It's not a big deal. They're a little confusing in with the raspberries because they kind of look like a raspberry. Other than that, what looks like grass in here is actually wheat. Um, the, I put the bedding from the rabbits here, uh, the, the hay, the manure, and sometimes we have sunflower seeds and wheat that falls down into the bedding. So I have a whole carpet of wheat here in this space. It's not grass, but I wanted to show it to you. And you can see my wheat <coughs> and my little sunflower, but that's acting as a mulch. I could come in here and put more rabbit manure on top of this, but the ducks will love to eat it, so I won't bother it. So you can see most of my raspberries that came up volunteer are now tall enough to handle ducks. What I need to do now is open my gates up, open my little fences up to let the ducks into these places and what they'll do is they will go and eat the weeds, eat the bugs, and um, I don't want them in here earlier in the season because I have cherries and raspberries and gooseberries and other things that will root and self-seed and get covered with mulch and then create a new plant. And so I had a lot of propagation going on in here that just naturally happens in the wild. I wanted to let those plants get taller than a duck before I let the ducks in. So and I also cut back my duck flock by <coughs> about half. We butchered all the extra drakes and we brought in four new baby ducks and we kept four of our older laying ducks and so now we only have eight ducks for the whole backyard anything I deeply deeply care about them not touching not eating not stepping on I'm going to cover in my little magic square cages and they work fantastically um, I have chicken wire in a lot of these places because my magic squares are so valuable to me that I'm always stealing them If I have to choose, I would do everything with magic squares, but I can't afford it because it's like $200 for a box of 90 squares. They're wonderful to have. I love them to pieces, but sometimes I have to use chicken wire just because it's, it's uh, cheaper. They do their job. This is what they did last year. You can see how bare it is. That's what ducks do if left for too long unsupervised. So I'm gonna take and put some mulch here to protect it from the ducks a little bit. And I'm gonna cut back this apple this wild apple so it's easier to get in there and I'm just going to start mulching the crap out of it. I do keep the strawberries protected because the ducks will get in and just absolutely flatten the strawberries. These strawberries are planted with garlic and we've had some cherries that the seeds got dropped in here so they're doing well. This is what hoary cress looks like. I leave it in until now and it's, it seduces the bees to come in and have some pollen from the strawberries. Now. If these guys were still actively blossoming, I would leave them because the bees love them, but they're not. They're coming to the tail end, their blossoms have become dingy, they're starting to dry out, so that's why I'm taking them down. And now they can just mulch the pathways.
right, these are our little cherries and they need to be protected from the ducks. The ducks will walk on them. And so those need protected so that we can dig them up later and put them to other parts of the property. And here you can see what Paige did. That's what Paige did to cover the little cherries that we wanted to save for next year. And it looks like she needs to put in about four more. Uh, Paigey, I only see one, two, three, four, five, six. What? I only see six um, covers. Yeah, but there's several plants under each. Under each? Yeah. I would like a few more that are underneath, if you don't mind. That's why I was weeding under there. Yeah, I think yeah. that was wise. All right, good job. Good help. All right. How's the grass, Graham? Is it tasty? That sound you heard? That's the sound of happy ducks. They're looking for all the bugs, but I do need to get as much wood mulch back in here as I can, because mud and pack dirt is not what we want under fruit trees. And the ducks have already gone in with their flat little feet and have uh, pressed things down. There's a little bit of mulch here. We need to bring a whole bunch more back so that the duck flattening effect is not too hard on these plants. These are the stakes I use for all my little fences. They're just uh, electric fencing stakes and they work so well. If I have a choice, I use my magic squares. I way prefer this to chicken wire, but they're expensive. It's like $200 for 90 of these squares. I can put them together however I want. That's why I love them. They're rigid, they're self-supporting. And so I can, I can build them as high as I want, or I can make them just one high. If I only make them one high, then the chickens can get in. The ducks can't get in if it's one high, but the chickens can. one that moved all the mulch back here. Was it a big deal? Uh, I had to have lunch in between so that I wasn't running out of energy. So, um, you do want to wear high boots that are about this tall so you don't get sawdust in them. Um, do you want to take the rest of the cuttings from the uh, apples? That's the cherry. Do you want to go put it on the pile for dad then for smoking? Sure. Thank you. Oh, Do you know that that whole space back there is raspberries, so be careful not to step on them? Yeah. You're, you know that already? Yeah. We saved some of these fruit bushes after the goats have eaten all the leaves off. Um, so we've got cherry and apple today. Sometimes we have pear. And after the goats have eaten the leaves off, we use the wood chipped in um, the smoker. Um, I'm going to take these up to the sheet. Can you, can you get, well, I, I got to film it. Can you come get your grass clippings into the sled? And you know that corner where there's all the raspberries? Do you think you can scatter the grass clippings without killing all the raspberries? Yeah. Can you tell the difference between the raspberries and the, and the apples and... Uh, yeah, can you can you tell how to be super gentle because they're they're green, yeah. very very green, very delicate. Those are the ones that I gave him earlier today. So those are ready to be put on John's pile to go through a chipper. And then he uses these in smoking, for smoking the pigs. So these ones, all the useful animal food is gone. And we're just gonna put these on the shredder pile. And there's the shredder pile. And pear. And 
that pile ready to be shredded. 